All right, let's learn some stuff about the UI 24R by Soundcraft. Now, it was about a year ago that I put out a video on YouTube. Uh, that, that video gained me about 90 followers, which isn't a whole lot, and about 40,000 views, which isn't too bad when you're talking about uh, a product review and maybe a tech review. And what I learned from that is this product is out there, but there's not a lot of folks who really understand it. Uh, and I'm not going to say that I know everything about it, nor will I claim to be a, an audio engineer expert. There's a lot of stuff that I don't know and I'm learning. But I have used this system at several hundred events, and I just kind of want to show you a couple of things about it. And we're just going to start with the very basics. You know, as you are setting up uh, your instruments or your mics, the number one thing you have to do is set up your gain structure. And your gain structure essentially is... In layman terms, um, for example, let's say you're talking about the water pressure coming into your house. Use that water pressure as uh, an example of the sources coming off the stage. They're coming into your mixer, and then from there, you need to control the amount of that pressure or that water pressure or that sound pressure that's coming in. Now, I get it. Don't crucify me in the comments. Uh, I'm just trying to convey a point for somebody that may not understand. As you bring that pressure in or as you bring that sound level in, you need to set a maximum acceptable level as it's coming in. And that way, everything downstream of that can be operated efficiently. So you have the water coming into the house, high pressure, you set a maximum level. Now all of your faucets or all of your sinks or all of your showers in the house react accordingly. If you have that pressure too high, then you blow the nozzles off all your sinks. If you have it too low, then you never get any water out of them. Well, it's the same way when you're setting your gain structure uh, on the UI24 or any other platform. Gain structure is the first step in that control of what the end product is going to sound like. It keeps you from feeding back. It can keep you from having too hot of mics or having to push sound pressure levels too high or noise floors too high so it sounds staticky. There's a lot of things that setting the right gain structure can help you and fix you and keep you from having problems down the way. Today we're gonna to look at this channel here, which is Pulpit. Uh, you can see it's lit up here at the bottom of the screen. The sliders are down. And we're just going to talk about a very basic way to set this gain structure. So I have a trusty, trusty mic here. I'm using a Sennheiser EW500 G3. Um, this is a wireless mic. And if you see, I can talk into it. You see a little bit of blue meter there on the bottom. You see a little bit of meter on the top. Uh, we're looking at channel number six. But there's not a whole lot there. So this is in big D mode. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my gain, which is on the top half of this. Now, I want to set my gain so when I bring my gain fader up, I am hitting in that minus 12 to minus 24 range when I get my peaks. When I get to the loudest part, I want it to be in that minus 12 to minus 24. The reason being is that gives me headroom for if I do hit a louder note, if I drop the mic, if something happens, then I'm not clipping across the board. If I drop the mic, then clipping is probably the least of my concerns. But it gives you an idea as to what we're looking for. So let's just do that together. I'm going to slide it up and let's see what happens. You're going to watch that orange line bouncing on channel number six. Check, check, check. Okay, see, we're up there at about minus 24, minus 12. So we're, I'm going to go a little bit higher. Check, check, check. All right, we're right in there. Hey, everybody. Hey, Welcome everybody. So we're right there, minus 24, minus 12. That gives me some headroom that if I need to make some uh, noise later, or if I get really loud or I scream or something like that, I am not going to clip in the system in theory. From there, we can go and unmute the channel. So the channel is unmuted. Now we're just gonna bring it up in the house a little bit. Check, 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 check. check. All right, there it is. So now you've got a nice, clean signal out in the house, and uh, that is basically setting the gain structure. So what you want to do when you set the gain structure is you want to make sure and go across, and all of your gain sliders, faders, may not be at the same level, and you can kind of see that represented in front of me here. 
But what you will see is that whenever uh, I turn everything on, all of the gain meters are hitting at about the same level. That means that's gonna give you a pretty even output of sound and allow you to fine tune what you need with the faders down below. So the next step in this process is to do something with this voice and this sound. And in this case, let's just talk a little bit about EQ. So from here on the UI24, let's go up and hit edit. When we hit edit, it brings us to a screen that shows multiple uh, different options, but let's go ahead and hit EQ. All right, so in this, I can hear a lot of S's, I can hear some DS'ers, I can hear uh, some sibilance, sibilance, sibyl, sibyl, sibilance. So let's get rid of that. Maybe let's hit the DS'er on that. All right, so we've hit a DS'er, and the DS'er has taken out some of those S's, uh, not a lot, so let's bring that up a little bit. Check, check, check. All right, so the DS'er is cleaned up some of those S's a little bit. You can still hear them a little bit. Um, they're going to live in that five or six to 10,000 range as far as hertz. And you can kind of see that's what's scooped out here at the bottom when you bring that DSer up. And you can adjust the level of cut by sliding that note up and down like that. So if I bring it all the way up, watch this. Check. All right, so that really takes a lot of the S's out. But what you're also doing is you're really scooping those frequencies. So if you have something of importance that lives in that area, uh, be it a guitar, be it a vocal range, be it whatever it is, you wanna be very, very careful, careful, careful is not a real world word. You wanna be very careful to not scoop too much uh, and make narrow cuts where you can to get rid of your problem, but not over broadly affect the entire mix. Oh, hello, hello. All right, so I think that sounds all right. So from there, um, now you can adjust your EQ and your flavor as you want. We won't get into a discussion, should we boost, should we cut? I'll leave that up to you. Everybody kind of has their own idea as to what they should do, but uh, let's just take a look here. All right, so my voice has changed a little bit. All of a sudden it's deeper. All of a sudden I've cut some stuff out. And so. You know, sound is subjective, and what sounds best to you is what you should go with. There's reasons why you could cut, there's reasons why you can boost, depends on your knowledge level, depends on uh, where you're at in your expertise and in your game, but that's a topic for another day. Maybe I'll come back and hit it. If you want me to hit that, uh, leave some notes in the comments, and I'm happy to do a, a video on that as well. All right, so just give me a little bit of low end, a little bit of mids, and we'll call that good. And as you come across the top here, setting up this channel, next you have a gate. For those of you who don't know, a gate is basically an on-off switch, and your voice has to get to a certain level, or the input, be it a tom or a snare or a guitar or whatever, has to get to a certain input level before it will turn the mic on. So for example, watch this. All right, I'm talking into the mic, but you can't hear me. But if I get really, really loud, uh, then I'll kick on, hey, hey, That is what a gate does. So where would you use a gate? You would use a gate in a situation where you have open mics on stage and you don't want them to pick up the constant background noise. That would be a great place to use a gate. You have um, an announcer mic, an open lapel mic, or an open pulpit mic on stage, and you don't want it just to pick up all the background noise, but when somebody grabs that mic to talk, you want it to be on for them. So it's an on-off switch and a way for you to control the inputs into your system so you don't get unnecessary noise when you don't need it. Moving across, the next thing you have is a compressor. Compressor, uh, essentially whenever you're, whenever the input uh, gets too loud, a compressor just cuts it down. It takes the highs uh, from the signal and the lows from the signal and squishes them together. So your highs aren't as high, your lows aren't as low, you kind of go down the middle. And you can compress a signal so much that whenever you compress it, you can make it sound like elevator music is highly compressed. There's not a lot of highs, there's not a lot of lows. Some people would say it's a Bose. 
it's just kind of right down the middle. It's just there. You can really squish or compress a signal. Uh, another thing a compressor is good for is if you have a vocalist that when they hit their really high notes, they can be very shrill, very loud, very piercing. You can put a compressor on them to take that top end off, to take that edge off, so you're not having to fight the EQ or fight the volume every time that person really hits the high notes and lets their vocal cords ring out. And the next one is the effects sends. On the effects sends, uh, it's just that. It's the amount of effects that you're throwing onto that voice. There's some parameters to the right side of the screen that you can uh, manually adjust. There's parameters on the left side, which is your uh, levels. So we'll just throw some reverb on. We'll put a lot on. Now you can hear the echo in the tail. Delay, delay, there's your delay. One thing about these, you guys might not know this, but if you take this and you hold the button, you actually have some options. So you can add chorus or what have you, watch. So right there, I just hit the button. Now I've got an option of a delay or a chorus. So let's change that to a chorus. All right, now I have a chorus. So now I have an entire choir singing behind me and it sounds angelic. All right, your fifth tab is gonna be auxiliary sends. And that is how much of this channel is going to each one of these auxes. And today we've got drums, electric guitar, bass, uh, Jocelyn and Anna, keys, etc. And it's how much of this input is going to each one of those. There's a couple different ways that you can adjust your auxiliary sends. And again, if you want to see more, put that in the comments and I'll show you that. Um, but this is just one of the ways. And then the final tab is patching, which we won't get into. That is definitely not a UI24 uh, 101 course. So let's go back to the main screen. So here you are, you've made all your changes. Everything sounds perfect. So all you do is you go back up and you hit that mix gain button, which is right up there. And here you are. Oh. And here you are, you're right back to your big D main screen. Over on the right hand side of the screen, you have your view groups and your mute groups. So there's your mute group. If you don't know how to set a mute group or a view group, again, leave it in the comments. I'm happy to show you guys. I don't know how much you know or don't know, but I'm definitely happy to give those tutorials. And uh, in 12 minutes and 37 seconds, there is a basic setup of a channel on a UI24R. It goes from setting the gain structure to the EQs all the way through the dynamics and then ultimately back to performance mode. So if you have any questions, let me know. Let me know what you think and uh, we'll take it from there. Until next time, thanks.